You are part of the whole we call as universe, a part limited in time and space. You experience yourself, your feelings, your thoughts as something separate from the rest, a kind of an optical delusion of consciousness. Consciousness lies at the heart of everything that you care about, everything that you have and everything that you are as a matter of experience. It is the substance of every joy and every sorrow. Consciousness is the real boundary between life and death. But where does it come from and why do we even possess it? All right, first thing first. First, let's clear out what consciousness actually means. It is not same as being awake or as being aware. These are three different things, being awake, being aware and being conscious. Being awake is when you are not sleeping. Being aware is when you are informed about your surroundings. Consciousness on the other hand is your awareness of the fact that you are aware of your awareness. All right, let me explain. For example, notice how a dog is aware of his surroundings, how it is moving around, playing, eating or even observing you sometimes. But is it observing the fact that it is observing you? Is it aware of his awareness? We can't say that for sure for a dog, but for normal humans, certainly yes. We do possess certain level of consciousness, probably a few levels higher than other animals and living beings. There are few abnormal cases in human patients that will give you a hint of what consciousness actually is. Anosognosia, a serious mental condition where the patient is sick but they are unable to accept it because they can't experience the sickness. The patient's arms are disabled but when you ask them to write something, they will simply find an excuse like I am not willing to write today. Anton syndrome, a similar mental condition more to do with eyesight. A blind patient denies loss of vision. When asked why can't they read, they would simply find an excuse like I don't have my glasses on. These patients are not lying. They are sick, but they simply can't experience it. Hemispetal neglect syndrome. These patients can't experience one side of their body, even though there may be no sensory loss on that side. Throw a ball and the patient will duck, but will never admit they did. The brain is still processing information from the whole system of vision. These patients have lost the connection between information processing and experiencing that information in the brain. That experience is called consciousness. Alright, enough defining consciousness. We do know what it means, but the problem starts when we try to pinpoint it in the body or at a specific part in the brain. Where exactly is consciousness in the body? The cortical areas of the brain serve very important functions for the living body. The prefrontal cortex serves the capacity to make decisions. The insular cortex triggers the control of basic survival needs. Patients have reported to have full consciousness even when these parts of the brain are damaged. Patients with hydranencephaly, a type of cephalic disorder where the whole cortex is damaged, also show some level of consciousness. In this picture, a child is born with a brainstem and a cerebellum but with no cortex at all. The three years old responds with joy when a baby brother was placed on her lap, showing the sign of consciousness. However, if you do any damage to the areas of the brainstem, this is when the light goes out. You lose consciousness. Brainstem serves a critical role in regulating certain involuntary actions of the body, including heartbeat and breathing. The cortical consciousness is dependent upon the brainstem consciousness. The areas within the brainstem, called the reticular activating system, is the foundation of consciousness. Imagine the level of complexity our brain possesses, which have taken ages and evolution to come to this stage. Now, to understand how consciousness evolved, we need to understand how consciousness evolved in primitive living species. It all started because we were hungry for food. For any living organism to sustain, it required energy. They could only get energy by consuming food. And to search for food, they needed to move. Consciousness level zero. The most basic organisms moved in random directions with no knowledge of its environment. The whole existence of their organism was dependent on chance. Consciousness level one. A bit more improved organisms. 
moved in specific directions in search of food, which means they started to become aware of their surroundings. This is when consciousness first started to originate within living organisms. A sense of direction in movement. The organisms kept improving and added a layer of sensory attribute as they leveled up and evolved. Consciousness level 2, sense of vision. Consciousness level 3, sense of inner representation or model. Consciousness level 4, sense of memory. Consciousness level 5, sense of time. Consciousness level 6, use of language. Consciousness level 7, several layers of intelligence for a species to expand and sustain and so on. It is now beginning to make sense what consciousness is and how it evolved. But the final piece of the puzzle still remains. Why do we need to be aware of our awareness? Why are we conscious? We can very well act and respond exactly like a living thing without experiencing it. More like a philosophical zombie. Well, it seems our brain needs consciousness as a tool to function properly. The brain is processing enormous amount of information every second and it is constantly creating inner representations or models so that it can determine appropriate responses. For example, light has seven colors that come under our visible spectrum, but generally we see light as white. The brain makes a model and simplifies it for our daily usage. A second example can be our day-to-day -day movement. The brain does not take into account the information processes of billions and trillions of cells and muscles inside the body. It does not need that level of information to plan our daily movement. In a similar way, the brain also needs model for itself. The primary function of the brain is to focus and it is constantly building models of itself to make sure the focus is not altered. It does so by considering only a limited band of information at a given point in time. And as we saw, that does not represent the full picture of reality. In theory, consciousness is the brain's imperfect picture of its own activity. Another theory suggests affect is generated in the brain stem, which is the source of all consciousness. Mark Zolms in his book, The Hidden Spring, urges scientists to look into our feelings in search for where consciousness originates. Feelings are always conscious and they are prerequisites for the higher forms of consciousness. If we understand the function of feeling, we understand the function of consciousness. That's where we should be looking. We are in total luck to have this level of consciousness that we possess today. We can experience and witness the flow of time, the movement of matter and the various interactions and feelings that we share between each other. Although we understand consciousness very lightly today, but we are conscious of the fact that we are heading in the right direction of some greater awakening. I can't thank you enough to have consciously watched this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and do subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And as always, keep your mind open and ask big questions.